Ricardo, Nick, congratulations. You guys have made it into the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. The e Kakalaka. <laughs> Today we are pre-testing the Kakalaka. So the Kakalaka is a very unique sword. Looking at Dave's weapon, I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be one of those heavy weapons again. And I pick it up and I go, no, it's not. You have a distal taper that goes down there, so the weight is not at the tip. I was pleasantly surprised. Forged by the Mongo tribe in the Kingdom of London during the early 1800s, the e Kakalaka was a fierce and imposing weapon. Designed for executions, the double-edged blade featured a thick spine and large crescent tip, giving it the ability to forcibly chop with ease. This powerful weapon with an ornate shape quickly became associated with wealth, dignity, and social position among men and women in the Mongo tribe. The e Kakalaka can be seen in the 2018 blockbuster film, Black Panther. That crescent edge acts like an axe head, but you're thrusting with the axe head. And then you have a shaft or the length of the blade there that's double edge, then you can get deep cuts with that. It's just like a sword, except it's got a spatulated tip that I can thrust with. When you pick up the weapon and it works and it functions the way it was made to be, it tells me a lot about the smith. That means he not only knows how to make it, he understands why he made it. That's blade smithing. So having that crescent head also gives you some curved edges to that. So one of the things we're worried about is you can get snagged. One, two, three, a point. So in wielding this, if I'm going to be slashing or chopping something, I got to make sure that I use the shaft and avoid the tip. If I'm thrusting with it, no problem. OK. The whole weapon has to work. See you in four days. My name is Nick Hicks. What I like most about bladesmithing is the artwork behind it. Being able to take something most folks would look at as a piece of junk and turn it into something beautiful and usable, uh, I think is the ultimate artwork. I cut the ADCRV at an angle to establish my scarf weld so that when I stack those billets up together, I'm going to try and mold those down into the original blade to make a crescent. All right, slowly but surely. Plan is move a lot of steel, get this thing shaped, hopefully quenched. It's going to be a big, heavy blade. The weapon was made as a serious chopper. It will be heavy. But when you get it in your hands, it will be a commanding tool. I'm going to make sure our quench tank is going to accept this. That's pretty good. The time is definitely an issue here, so I have to get this thing quenched. I think we're pretty good. I'm elated. It's straight, so I'm feeling great right now. So I'm going to take the black walnut. I'm going to start working it up. We've got to get this hourglass design into it. We're going to put our butt cap on, our pommel cap, and then we're going to weld it and attach it up so that it'll be strong and tight and ready to go. I want the end of my handle to be protected as much as I can. I've got everything all together, so now just comes really working on that edge as much as I can. I feel a tremendous weight lifted off of my shoulders. My name is Ricardo Villar. I'm originally from Brazil. I immigrated to the US two years ago. In Brazil, people know about me and my knives, but in America, nobody knows me. If I do well in this competition, people in America are probably going to know my name, too. I'm using water on the anvil just to make the tea a little cooler. This is a very old technique to give me the control to make the shoulders better. The tip is done. Time to get into the oil. 
That's hard. I haven't played that good to turn in, but I think I can do better. So let's turn on the porch and start over. I love so much this job that I'm making twice. <laughs> what took me hours before, it just took me minutes this time. And now I'm done. I love when a plan comes together. I quench the second blade. The blade is straight, it's hard, and I'm much more confident than the second project. So the second one is the one I'm gonna compete with. What I did different in this blade is it has a different edge geometry and a harder temper. Everything is coming together. Now it's time to go and see how does it gonna perform. For me, it's okay. I'm happy. <laughs> All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Well, your Ikakalakas look interesting and exotic, but what kind of lethal damage can they do? Well, to find that out, I'm gonna take your weapon and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistic stun. Ricardo, you're first, you ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready, let's go for it. All right, Ricardo. I like uh, your Ikakalaka. Thank you. It's got a good weight to it. The handle construction is comfortable. When you're swinging in this, it digs deep. That is a sharp edge. And when you're penetrating, it really digs and cuts on the way out. Overall, sir, you will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Nick, your turn, sir. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Ricardo's a Kakalaka is everything I expected, light, fast, uh, well-made weapon. But my confidence level is pretty good. I'm fairly confident that my blade will succeed. The minute you pick up this weapon, I feel the stress on my wrist, my elbows, and my shoulder. It's so forward heavy. Tell me what you feel on the shoulder. I'm trying to swing this over and over. It's gonna be tough. And that's a tendon ripper monster. And it's not looking good. Nick, due to the extreme weight of your Ikakalaka, the judges feel that it would be unsafe to attempt to wield it in the same manner that they wielded Ricardo's one-handed blade. And because we can't test it evenly and fairly, we cannot move forward with testing. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then please exit the forge. I'm just totally disappointed. Sorry about Thank that, you. my friend. I wanted them to really test that weapon. I had a lot of faith in it. I knew it was heavy, but one little mistake like this is something I'm going to learn on and build. It's going to make me a better smith. Well, Ricardo, congratulations. You are the new Forge and Fire champion, and that is the title that comes with a check for $10,000. Come on forward. Good job. I think it's a great weapon. This is great. This is amazing. Being a champion is to trust what I'm doing. You can trust on my blades. I can trust on my work. I, I'm really, really happy to be the champion. <laughs>